I don't know whether a uh, silk purse out of a sow's ear is an appropriate metaphor, but um, I would like to suggest that we have a great opportunity with sea level rise to do something about ocean acidification. What is at stake for us in, in the world is actually global security because we are talking at, at, at the heart of things of food security. And uh, a few statistics there might give you a sense of both uh, our national uh, economic benefits um, that are threatened and um, down at the bottom some of our uh, global um, benefits that are threatened. Um, here in Washington State, um, we uh, are the top provider of farm shellfish for the nation. 85% uh, of West Coast sales come from Washington State. Um, our sales are, uh, are, are the largest um, in the nation for farm shellfish. We have $270 million um, that come to the state through shellfish production employing directly or indirectly uh, 3,200 folks. 30 million in licensing fees and um, the boost to local economies and uh, the seafood industry in Washington um, involves 42,000 jobs and at, at least $1.7 million. Um, for Native Americans, there's a lot more involved than just the economic benefits. This involves their cultural integrity. So there is a, a, a lot at stake. So with rising seas, what can we expect? A lot, a lot of water. And there are places in the US that um, uh, will be toast. There is no way to save Miami, for instance. Um, there are other places like Louisiana, uh, which because of uh, the way the oil industry has uh, devastated the marshes. Um, it, it will be incredibly expensive to forestall uh, um, the kind of disaster uh, that some people are predicting. So come to the question of, is there a silver lining? And we hope there is, and we think there can be. Um, what does one meter of sea level rise equal in terms of loss? about the size of the state of New Jersey in the United States. Um, the, the key here is, can we learn to manage this? Can we learn to work with nature and give it a helping hand um, and develop ways of using the sea level rise so that we can benefit from it? Um, certainly, if we uh, uh, use this opportunity, um, we need to um, obviously move beyond such drivers of practice and policy um, as many of the failed policies and practices of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Um, we hope we can do that. One of the ways that we can do this is by uh, expanding um, such great and proven sequesters of carbon as salt marshes, kelp beds, and, uh, and, and seagrass meadows. These are fabulous um, uh, ways to take carbon out of both the water and the atmosphere, but they're at great risk right now. Uh, we are losing our salt marshes at a faster rate then we are losing rainforests. At the same time, um, a salt marsh will bury uh, 17 times the amount of carbon as a rainforest will. Um, losing it through development, losing it through uh, industry practices. Um, if, if, if we can somehow bring uh, um, to our senses, come to our senses in regard to the use of salt marshes, um, we have a chance to, uh, to look to the future where we will have shellfish production, where we will have the wonderful nurseries that provide up to 85% of the seafood value each year. Tremendous loss of um, salt marsh due to um, sea level rise, so what we need to do uh, is 
plan for the salt marshes of the future, about a half of 1% of the seabed um, it is protected by such things as salt marshes and uh, seagrass meadows and kelp beds. Um, it, it, they do a, an immense amount of work with very little parts uh, of the seabed used. Can we create refuges? Um, this is a key question. Um, the, some things we could study right here in Washington State are, for instance, the Lummi shellfish uh, production. Um, when Taylor shellfish and Whiskey Creek um, uh, oyster hatchery were losing up to 80% of their larva production, the Lummies were going along just fine. How did that work? Was the system under which the Lummies have provided some protection for their shellfish beds how much of a factor was that? What can we learn from the Lummies? Um, learning from the success stories of our time is the best way to go forward and solve some of the problems of the future. So whether we can create these refuges is a key question uh, for how well we survive the sea level rise and the rise in acidity that is inevitable for us. Um, the first documented refuge that we have found uh, is uh, in Florida. It was started in 2009, um, and it, it, there are others that have followed. But what we hope to do um, is uh, document um, what these refuges have achieved and follow their uh, successful practices uh, in the planting of sea grasses and the like. In terms of where we go from here, um, it, it's a matter of developing the tools that we need. Um, I believe that um, the effects on the economy, on the regulatory process, on conservation decisions uh, will be taken more and more often at the local, county, um, state, uh, and regional level. Uh, I think it's futile to hope that we might uh, indeed um, move at the national level on these national problems. But I do believe there's great hope for what we can ac accomplish at the local level. And I think it's, it's, it's happening here. Um, this implementation of, uh, of coastal management plans that are being informed uh, by uh, uh, NGOs, by state agencies, and the like, um, this, is, this gives me a, a, a great deal of hope. I know that uh, by working through such organizations as we have in this state, as the Marine Resource Committees um, in each county that has salt water, um, they are eager to implement um, programs and practices um, that can help uh, such as um, planting of, um, of sea grasses, uh, salt marshes now, and then um, looking to the future so they can be uh, achieved uh, ocean acidification reduction methods such as the planting of sea grasses um, and the planting of uh, floating wetlands. Um, this is a practice that uh, as is now in, in somewhat uh, wide use in Idaho for reducing eutrophication, for reducing phosphorus, nitrogen, and carbon. Um, they have, in, in essence, floating wetlands, which they moor or anchor in um, vulnerable areas. And uh, they are recording great success in cleaning up, for instance, Hayden Lake. Um, this is a practice that uh, could be brought into our communities um, and involving community organizations such as the MRCs. So looking to the future, local, regional control and implementation is, is going to be, I think, the key. And um, as, I, as I see it, I am very uh, optimistic that just as Washington State took the lead in establishing the first governmental body 
to recommend action on ocean acidification with the Blue Ribbon Panel, and you, you are all uh, familiar by this time with this study. Um, and I hope you will become familiar with Appendix 9 to that study, which provides uh, very specific recommendations for uh, actions that can be taken. Um, uh, I recommend sweetening the waters as, a, uh, um, as an example of uh, uh, evaluation of practical means of reducing ocean acidification through a variety of means. I'm also heartened by what is happening in this state with the coal trains. Um, I believe most of you will be familiar with the attempts uh, to establish coal export terminals on the coasts of Oregon and Washington um, for export of coal to uh, Asia. I don't think it's going to happen. And I will tell you why. I think we have an ace in the hole with the Indian tribes, but I also think that there are, uh, that there is a growing consortium of the interfaith community, of um, uh, non-governmental organizations, of a very active uh, a governor uh, of state agencies that will uh, supplement the inadequate uh, review, environmental review by the Army Corps of Engineers. But I think the whole card is the tribes themselves who have treaty rights that are being violated and who will, I believe, uh, if necessary, if the approval for this goes through, will not allow the trains to cross over Indian country. I think that uh, there are enough people in Washington State who have vowed to not let the trains pass um, that, again, Washington will be a leader um, in, uh, in an environmental action that affects ocean acidification um, and in this way, uh, Washington will continue um, its leadership role on facing an uh, international problem. Thank you.